to collaborate first of all. <clears throat> all right, so you say you're working on four point, let's see. Do I have that open? We shall see. I believe so. Oh, this is 4.2. Let me go back to 4.1 and then I'll see what I've got here. All right, 4.1. There's my slides and let me get the, okay, here's the homework. So now, Let's go to share screen. Oops, wrong screen, sorry. Um, that's not what I want. Okay, this is what I want. Share screen, there we go. All righty, so now, Four point one. Here it is. Okay, so you said number five was giving you problems. Let's take a look. Okay, if the probability that it will rain tomorrow is point two, what is the probability that it will not rain? Would you recommend taking an umbrella? Well, rain and not rain is one of those sort of, they're called complementary events, right? Either it rains or it doesn't. There is no halfway, right? So if we know that the, the probabilities have to add up to 100, either it rains or it doesn't, then we end up with something that looks like this. We end up with what we call the event and the complement of the event. So we have, um, we have the probability of rain is 0 0.2. And we know we have the prob, we don't know what the probability of no rain is, right? This is our question mark, but we do know that the total, because one of the rules is that the sum of all the probabilities in a sample space has to equal one, right? So in this case, we know that probability that it rains plus the probability of no rain equals one. Well, if I know the probability that it rains is 0.2, then, and I'm looking for the probability that it doesn't rain, probability of no rain Would equal one. So how do I get the probability that it's not going to rain? Mm. Don't know. Well, instead of calling it by this symbol, probability of no rain, what if we called it x? 0 0.2, okay. right? Plus, or e for event. Let's call it e for the event. Equals one, right? How do I find E? You, um, does it have to do with subtraction or addition? Yeah. yeah, I subtract it, right? I just solve for E. So all I do is I subtract 0 0.2 from both sides, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what I end up with is, what is one minus 0 0.2? Oops. Oh, uh, 
point eight. Yeah, point eight. So if there's if there's a likelihood that it's not going to rain, so the probability of no rain would be zero point eight, right? Basically, there's a 20% chance it's going to rain. So there's an 80% chance that it's not going to rain. Hmm. Right. Now, if there's an 80% chance that it's not going to rain, would you or would you not recommend an umbrella? I you would. Know? You you would still like to recommend an umbrella? Okay. Um, even though you are fairly safe, you can never be sure. <laughs> so carry an umbrella. As long as you have some sort of justification, um, I think the answer in the back of the book says you're, you're fairly safe without one. Either answer would be acceptable as long as you indicate that you actually thought about it would you like to carry it or not i mean there's reasons just but in case yeah exactly all right so that's number five how about what do we have going on with number six let's mm -hmm. see let me go back to the homework here how are we doing with number six? Classify each statement as an example of classical, empirical, or subjective probability. Oh yeah, I didn't have a chance to talk about this yet. There'll be a couple of more videos going up, by the way, today. Um, so let's see. Let me go back and show you that. So the probability that a person will watch the six o'clock evening news is, let me show you the, the types of probability. We can talk about that. What did you learn about the types of probability when you were looking at the slides? Did you get anything from that in terms mm. of? Let me go to the slide. Here they are. There's three types, classical, empirical, or subjective probability. It starts on slide number 10, and it goes to, there's a little bit of a discussion here of classical. There's not too much discussion of subjective and um, 10 and 11 is classical is our big emphasis. And then you have to skip down to slide 24, which is probably why you didn't find it because they're not together. Um, but 10 and 11 and 24. So I'll kind of give you a little bit of um, help with that. <clears throat> You've seen a lot of them already. Um, so if I go to classical probability, if you're looking at classical probability, you're thinking about things like what makes it classical probability besides the fact that that's kind of the first thing that people study, okay? Classical probabilities, probabilities arise in situations where each event in the sample space has an equally likely chance. of occurring. And so typically you'll see classical probabilities in things like cards, 
because cards have a standard deck and there's always the same number of cards in the deck cards. There's dice, which I mentioned um, in my other video as well. Dice have um, an equally likely chance. There's, if I roll one die, there are six outcomes. They each have an equally likely chance of occurring. Other games of chance, there's some other games mentioned in the book. Um, things like roulette, for example, which is the wheel with the numbers on it. Um, roulette, there's a game called chuck -a luck which is mentioned in one of the problems. That's a, that's a game of chance where you um, land on a certain space and things happen. These things are all classical probability where you have an equally likely chance of something occurring. Empirical probabilities, if you know anyone that maybe they're a psych major or they're a bio major or they do any kind of research, you get what we call empirical probability. And you don't have to be in one of those fields to do that, but it just might be something that you're familiar with. So empirical probability happens when you when you actually carry out an experiment and record results. So this comes from this comes from experience. There's no assumptions. I mean, there are always underlying assumptions, but there's no assumptions about using those for what we're actually going to do. This is based on the experience of actually carrying out the experiment. So if you, if I tell you, okay, classical probability tells us that if I flip a coin 50 times, right, that exactly half of those should be heads and half should be tails. Those are classical probability. If you go out and you actually flip that coin 50 times, right, and you record your results and you only got 46 heads instead of 50 heads, that would be an empirical probability, okay? Mm -hmm. does, that, does that make sense? Now, yes. subjective probabilities are, we don't, she mentions it because it's part of the book, but it's not something that she emphasizes <laughs> a lot. Subjective probabilities, subjective probabilities happen in situations that rely on, these rely on usually expert usually expert um, knowledge and experience. And what I mean by that, so it's kind of like doing um, an empirical, but in this case, this is something that really is somewhat unpredictable. And so the person who's judging this probability is using some sort of model to help them. So this could be something like, the biggest, most familiar example of this would be like weather forecasts. Could be things like hurricane, um, hurricane patterns. Obviously you're using models, but you can't predict that. You obviously, they don't have the same chance of occurring and we can only look at what's come in the past. We can look at the models to see that. So weather forecasts, you can do things, even something like um, predicting somebody's mood, for example, if you're with somebody who's very moody and they, they always do certain things, you might be able to nudge that into a subjective category. Um, weather forecast, anything that has a model, things like genetic testing, Certain forms of genetic testing might fall into this. Um, 
life expectancy calculations go into a lot of empirical probability, but again, it might come into this. Weather is usually the big one for that. So in this case, what we want to do here is we want to look at our sample, our, our question, okay? The probability that a person will watch the six o'clock evening news is 15%. Now, this one might be a little bit hard because you could go for subjective or empirical for this, depending on what kind of data you were looking at. I think she went with empirical, but let me see what she put on the screen. Yeah, she said it was empirical. Um, and that's Wait, probably because- I have to show my work on this? What was that? I said, do I have, how do I show my work? Okay, for on this, this for six one, for six, you don't have to. There is no work for number six. Oh. There is work for number seven and on, but there is no work for number six. It's just specify which one it is. Okay. Okay. So probably for 6A, it's based on um, the Nielsen ratings. And they, what they do is they go sample a bunch of households. So they're doing the empirical research and it's coming back in an empirical manner. Um, Chaka Luck, as I said, is a game of chance. So that's a classical. So this one, um, let me write on the screen here. Do I have you back, Jason? Sorry about that. Jason? Are you here? Let me make sure my mic, yeah, my mic is on. I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Because it says my connection is unstable. So, all right. So the first one is empirical. So let me, let me um, put this in as empirical. Mm -hmm. And so this is number six now, right? So let's do this. Yes. Thing. So I share here. Um, this is number six. So number one, so A is empirical. Number B, the chuckala game, is classical because that's a game of chance. This is a game, it's considered a game of chance. So that's classical. 6C, what are we doing in C? Let's take a look. 6C, I think, was the probability that a bus will be in an accident on a specific run is about 6%. Okay, again, we can't say for sure, but based on our data in the past, um, based on what people have seen with the models, we're going to call that empirical, okay? I, I don't think she's making a huge distinction here between empirical and subjective, but she's calling it empirical. So we'll go with that. And the probability of getting a royal flush when five cards are selected at random, this is a royal flush is a poker hand. I know what it means. So that's a classical probability, okay? So 
game of chance. Exactly. So that would go with that would go with our um our our probability there. How did you do with number seven? Mm, I haven't tried number seven. I okay. just did like the I just did like one through four right on the walkthrough. No problem. Why don't you, based on what I showed you in the walkthrough with a single die, why don't you try number seven and see if you can get that? Do you know what the sample space for a die is? Sample space? No. The sample space is the outcomes for a single die, right? Mm -hmm. So in a sample space, we have, okay, so let me just finish this. 6C was empirical. And 6D was classical. Because we're dealing with, in this case, we're dealing with poker hand, right? So that would be a game of chance, obviously. So. I'm breaking yeah. up. Okay, let me see if I can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the meeting and rejoin. So give me about two minutes. Just stay in the meeting, Jason, and I'll come back. Okay, and see if that will clear up the mess that because I think it's my connection. 